Okay, then let's start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's talk. Uh, it was a long day, but I hope that uh, it will be interesting. Uh, today, I will talk about Vue.js uh, end of life and how we can migrate to the latest version, which is Vue.js 3. And um, we will explore the whole journey, how we can approach that uh, in terms of uh, the development process, of the teams, of the management of the whole, this whole process. So, uh, let me better introduce myself and say a, bit, a few things about me. I, my name is Emma Zick, of course. I'm a lead software engineer at Alwin Lottery Solutions. And um, I'm also, I talk a lot about Vue.js. I like to talk about uh, the framework. I've also been involved in the Vue.js Athens meetup where I'm a co-organizer uh, in the team. Um, and in general, I've been using uh, Vue.js uh, for many years. And uh, right now, um, I'm in the process where I try to uh, better understand how this migration process can happen uh, for many applications or different kind of teams. So this was an idea about, um, this was the original idea of having this presentation. Um, yeah, so let me start. First of all, I would like to uh, also mention a few things about the company I work for. It's all in lottery solutions. Uh, we've, um, we are involved in the lottery and gaming sector where we try to commit to responsible gaming uh, and engage um, with our players uh, with uh, captivating experiences. And also what we do also best is that we try to be at the front front, front of the te technological advancements. And uh, of course, we do use Vue.js and the migration process is something that we are thinking of uh, how we can plan ahead and maybe uh, decide moving on onto the next version. So let's discuss at this point how the version, the state of the Vue.js 2 version is right now. Currently, the final released uh, minor version is 2.7. On that version, it has received about 18 uh, months of long-term support by the core team. And on that uh, period of time, there have been some bug fixes and security fixes that have been added uh, into the version, but no new features have been uh, involved on, the, on those release, releases, the latest ones. So um, also I would like to mention that there's no, let's say, great developer um, experience gap between the latest version and the newer version because the core team has, um, has made some uh, effort uh, with providing uh, some packages and some compatibility, uh, let's say, support in order for us to be able to transition easily between those two versions. But again, it, it is very beneficial to move on to the latest version regard, regardless of that. So let's set some expectation about um, the current version that uh, the Vue.js 2 has, the 2.7. It will still be available even though that it has reached the, um, the end of life. It will be still be, be available on all the distribution channels, uh, which means the CDN and the package manager. And also, it will no longer, of course, receive any updates because it has reached the end of life. Apart from that, if you've been using Vue.js 2, it will be very hard, of course, as you might guess, to find packages that are compatible with that version. However, there's still hope. Uh, there, are, there is a company that can provide for you uh, security fixes and browser compatibility fixes and also, uh, also provide agreements such as SLAs, that is Hero Devs. And this is a company that has been listed and recommended on the website of the Vue.js, the official uh, website. So why would you need to move onto the, onto the next uh, version? There are a couple of things that you might need to consider. Um, so in order to decide whether you should upgrade or not, there are things that you uh, need to analyze about your application. First of all, um, 
in every migration, I guess, it's not just about the Vue.js framework, you should check your app stability. And also, you should check uh, what test coverage do you have, because that is um, a good point where you can have a better safety net on changing parts of your implementation. And also, you can think of how resilient is your app to the changes. So if there's some kind of flexibility, that would be uh, a good symptom uh, on your source code. Of course, you will need to think about the regression of your application. You will need to manually test the application after uh, the migration or continually. And also, if you're going to continue to develop new features in your application. A few more things uh, are that maybe you can address some pain points that you have some issues in your application with the newest version, the Vue.js 3. And of course, if you have packages that they need to be upgraded, by the, but they are not compatible with uh, the newer version, that would be a bottleneck for you, so you will need to consider also that. Any changing behavior between the two versions, and of course, what in the, everything ends all in the cost of upgrading and the capacity that we have, you will need also to think about those two areas as well. So how many time it will take for you and if you have the team or the capacity or the capabilities that you need in order to complete that effort. So in case you remain on Vue.js and you decide to do so, thinking all of those aspects, uh, because it's not the right time for you, uh, the things that you can do is that you should upgrade to the latest version. This is the recommendation by the core team. You should upgrade to 2.7. And also, it is a good idea to avoid using any deprecated features while you continue development or any kind of pattern and behavior that is not suggested by the core team. And of course, uh, you can continue in general developing your application in a way that maybe you can decide that to do it later and have that future transition in mind. So this is all about the Vue.js 2 version. Maybe we should go a bit further and discuss about what Vue.js 3 has to offer uh, for us. So Vue.js 3 offers a more seamless support for TypeScript, which is very um, prominent on the newer version. It has better performance. There have been changes, especially about the tree shaking uh, of the framework that adds very much uh, performance to it, traits of per, uh, good performances. It will be a wider ecosystem for you to have more packages available in the uh, NPM. You will find more uh, maintainable packages um, in comparison with the Vue.js 2, which is very uh, obvious that many projects might not continue to develop their uh, plugins for Vue.js 2. You will have access to the new features of the framework. And also, there are two APIs which is shared between the two versions. So if you used to be using the Options API, you can continue to use that and also transition on the Composition API, which is the newer version. Maybe it will be a good change for your application. And of course, there is small learning curve. For example, if you still decide to remain the, on the Options API, you will, have, you will have the same expectations as you do now. The um, developer experience won't change that much. And this is also an extra benefit. So about, uh, these are some good uh, points of um, upgrading to the latest version. But also we can see some differences in the ecosystem about the Vue.js 3. Right now, in case you have been using um, the Vue.js in your projects or in any app, um, the newer versions for Vue routing um, are the fourth version. There is a newer version for uh, Vue Dev Tools in order to um, inspect your application. And of course, for the test utils, this uh, package used for your testing in, in the Vue.js projects. Also, there is a new build uh, tool, which is uh, the Vite. We have been using in the past the Vue CLI, and uh, it is recommended that you can move uh, forward with uh, Vite.js, which is a very promising package, and a lot of frameworks uh, other than Vue also use that uh, build um, tool. Of course, 
The state management plugin has changed. It has been uh, the UX in the past. Now it's recommended to use Pinia, and that is the plugin that um, it's actually maintained. And uh, let's say the both uh, teams have grouped their efforts, and they are now suggesting to use Pinia. And of course, for JSX, you can move to the newest plugin, which is the one um, listed in the slide. For ID support, in case you've been using VS Code, you can move from VTour to Volar. And for the command line TypeScript support, you can use the Vue TSH package. And finally, in case you have been using ViewPress uh, for some kind of uh, static site generation, uh, you can now move into the VitPress, which is the latest uh, the upgraded version. So, what are some new features uh, that you will see in Vue.js 3, which are very useful? Um, these are the Composition API, which is actually the most promising one and the one that we have been anticipating uh, along uh, ago for that. It is the script setup where you can use the Composition API inside your script elements, uh, inside your single file components in Vue.js. Also, the teleport uh, feature, the create renderer API where you can write your own custom render functions in order to produce your templates, and also the new emits option, which is the one that you define the new the events for your component. In the past, it was a, it was a bit more, um, let's say, verbose how you can uh, write your uh, events in the components. Now it's more structured and it's more uh, easy to understand and maintain it um, in a better way in the future. There is also a feature which enables you to have variables inside your CSS so that you can have state-driven CSS and um, depending on the reactivity, you can change the styles of your components. Multiple V models that can be supported in the same um, component and um, of course, there is the suspense, which may you have heard already about that, and the fragments inside um, your components. So let's, right now we have discussed about the Vue.js 2 version, we've seen some features, the benefits and all of that, but in order to begin so, there, there are a lot of things that you might consider because this is a long process. You might have a small application or a smaller team, but regardless of that, you will need to face some uh, changes uh, on the way maybe you work, on the way that your application beha behaves, how you're going to test it, and all of this. So let's begin considering about the team. There are a couple of things that you can consider, and these are um, if your application, let's say, it's a seed application or a baseline application that many other teams receive, and you need to, in order to once you upgrade that, other teams will need to also customize and do a few things about the, um, their apps. Uh, you will need to think if there is some repetitive work that you should share as a knowledge to other teams or you can automate it in a way that it makes better sense for your organization. There is also one thing more to consider about the, mem the familiarity of the members of your teams with the Vue.js frameworks. There might be members that they have let's say, a more uh, JavaScript generic uh, knowledge and they are not so attached to a specific framework. They might be more familiar with Vue.js. So all this uh, thinking will lead to in how you will, let's say, organize the task and the efforts that are going to be made. You might need to um, allocate tasks in case you are leading some kind of team or if you are responsible for this migration process, you might need to assign some tasks, uh, let's say more complex tasks to the senior members or members that they have better familiarity with the framework. And maybe if you better organize the tasks, um, you can define in a better way the work that needs to be done. So clear understanding is even a very important thing in a migration process regardless of what that uh, entails. First of all, um, if you uh, analyze your application, um, a good idea is to start with the features that you are using, which are actually deprecated. So you will need to think about how you utilize the deprecated features and patterns that 
you have been using uh, in your application so that you can decide how you can move forward. And you can give some time and thought to that because preparing for your action plan is actually the main work. Uh, the more preparation you do, the more clear the path will be for you and also more clear will be for your members. And of course, you can utilize a lot of more members if the action plan is clear because you can give a more direct, uh, let's say, uh, way to work um, and collaborate with each other so that you can achieve this migration. One thing that I find useful, I'm not sure if everyone uh, will do so, is that you try to do a dry run of the migration, uh, take a, a feel of what it looks like, see all the warnings, try to make some, let's say, uh, groups in your mind, categorize the kind of issues that you might um, address in a high level, so that you can uh, have a better understanding on what it's going to be um, the first steps that you will need to think of. And uh, once you have a good idea of those warnings, because you're going to receive a compile, compile time warnings and runtime warnings, then uh, you can move on and see how you can refactor your code in a way that is uh, incremental, so that you can do small and safe steps all along the way. So, I think that I, one more question that you will need to do, and I know that I have added a lot of things that you will need to consider, but I'm in favor of preparing, uh, let's say, for a task rather than finding out uh, of the unknowns in a later phase. Everything will be, everything is possible, of course, and, every, and there are going to be many things that are going to be unknown in the future, uh, but at least you can better prepare yourself um, as much as you can. So one thing you will need to see is how well your app is maintained. Um, is there kind of a repetitive work that needs to be done on 100 components? Uh, is there some kind of a absence of abstractions? Can you make some kind of abstraction and create some component that can eliminate those changes that need to be made 100 times? A good uh, example for that would be, for example, if you have a package that is deprecated and you need to be, you need to replace that, and you are importing that package all over your components. Can you create a layer, a JavaScript file that can be imported everywhere, but on that layer of abstraction in that JavaScript file, you can add that um, component. Is there any kind of documented behavior that is uh, observed in your application that you wa it wasn't meant to be used that way? For example, there is the public API which is documented in the Vue.js documentation, but if you've been using in some weird way uh, the properties which are part of the internal API, that could be an issue for you in your application. It is recommended that you don't uh, use something which is not publicly documented. And, uh, for example, if you have some VNode that you have been accessing its properties in a way that is, isn't documented or supposed to be so, it is possible that the core team might remove, let's say, change the properties in the future and you will have some breaking changes there and functionality. So, all this um, thought um, I guess will lead to an action plan where you will start to do uh, a few things. One thing that you should do is to upgrade all your dependencies before the migration. You should reach the latest version as much as possible. Um, and in that um, journey, you will find, of course, all the dependencies that there are bottlenecks for you, which means that they are dependencies that they cannot be upgraded or they are not uh, compatible, compatible with the newer version. So you will try, you will need to try to find some kind of replace, replacement or just remove them and think about the implementation that you need and the features you have been using in a different way so that you can recreate the solution that you need. So it is good to avoid using any deprecated features, of course, still from today, let's say, uh, whatever, whenever you decide to move on to the actual migration. And um, as I mentioned earlier, create the, as much as uh, possible the abstractions that you need in your application and look for commonalities so that you can automate all this um, process. 
So commonalities would be something like maybe you've seen a pattern of work that needs to be done many times and you can write your own script, uh, even replacing and code generating the code that you need, uh, especially for large applications that would be an issue and maybe a potential, potential approach. And of course, in all of these, a good uh, question would be how you're going to work. Are you able to do some code freeze and say that, okay, I'm not going to um, develop any new features, I won't uh, deploy anything to production, I will focus for a couple of months on migrating the Vue.js version and have actually a code freeze. But if it's, not, if it's not the case for you and you are not able to accommodate that, maybe you will need to maintain uh, features that are developed on both branches. So that will be a challenge. Uh, many teams may have different approaches. Uh, maybe they address that issue on a timely manner and they try to be as planned as possible so that they know when to expect and allocate the, the time uh, that then they need for the new features that are expected to come through. But in all of this, a good uh, solution that the core team has provided is the compatibility mode. So while migrating in Vue.js, there is, um, let's say, a unique version of the Vue 3.js version, which makes this transition smoother. And this is a package which is available through the, the Vue.js project. And on that package, uh, you will find ways so that you can actually have both components in different, ver you can have actually components in different versions. Let's say you will have some in Vue.js 2 and some others in Vue.js 3. This is something that is going to be allowed once you switch um, onto this compatibility mode. And um, that compatibility mode is by default on Vue.js 2. It is configurable, of course, and you can change that. And most public APIs behave the same. So once you uh, turn on that compatibility mode, all the APIs that you expect from Vue.js 3 uh, and Vue.js 2 uh, will be probably just as that. That compatibility mode can provide you warnings. This will be your guide for addressing all the issues of the migration. And uh, can be, of course, as you can understand maybe, a configurable per component. So you might say in your configuration that my application is in Vue.js 3 and you can go to in Vue.js 2 or the inverse. And you can go to specific components and say uh, that these are of a different version and they should behave on that version. Uh, correctly. And of course it is su suggested that you use that compatibility mode because it's a good space for improvement, for learning the difference between the versions and practice on that. Uh, what is actually noteworthy uh, are some kind of limitations that there are uh, and these are uh, for the warnings part. Um, Vue.js can provide you on, the, on that compatibility mode um, warnings about things that have changed or deprecated, but it cannot uh, identify any kind of internal APIs being used uh, that your implementation relies on, on any kind of such dependencies. So, because these, uh, these are not, let's say, part of the public API, it's not meant to be a warning. So, this is, falls back to what I mentioned earlier, that you should not be using something that it's not undocumented uh, so that you can receive the warnings of the API. And of course, one important thing is that Internet Explorer 11 is, not, is still not supported. The core team has decided to keep that decision and it's no longer going to be supported. So as a first step, you will need to try to remove some dependencies. First of all, you need uh, to uninstall actually the Vue.js package from your project. As a second step, you will need to uninstall all the, the dependencies that are uh, there for Vue.js uh, in Vue.js 2. And uh, one last step, um, because removing all those dependencies will break your code, uh, this is something that you can think of that uh, later on and um, do it incrementally in a way that uh, it's more flexible for you. Uninstalling all the packages, it's a good step because this way you can avoid all the compilation errors at first 
do some progress and then move, up, move uh, on to resolving that issue. Um, so about activating the migration build, once you have uninstalled the Vue.js package, uh, you will need to install actually the Vue.js 3 package along with the compatibility mode which is a separate package from the Vue.js 3. And this is, these are the two packets you will need to add. I hope this is clear. I know it's a bit small, uh, the font size. And as a, uh, another step would be to change your configuration file in case you've been using Webpack or some kind of, or some other build tool. And also create an alias that all your imports, imports that resolve from view uh, now can resolve from that special compatibility mode um, package that view has created for this transition process. Then you will need to enhance the typings of view so that, for example, if you've been using TypeScript, uh, you can export uh, the default view in that way. And um, you will need also to add some kind of uh, global configuration. So this is the step that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you are able to choose which version of the Vue.js you are using and also which features you will be using. For example, um, in Vue.js 3, uh, scoped slots are deprecated. You can have, um, you can resolve all the issues and finally go to your configuration file and say that this is disabled so that you can avoid using that, of course, and this is something that you should do as part of the process. It is important to address all those issues in groups because this way you can also manage better this kind of configuration. So this is something that uh, would look like uh, in the files uh, in your implementation. Also, um, you can change the version by using a different mode. As I said earlier, the default mode is in Vue.js 2. So saying adding the property of mode 3 um, actually changes the version. And you can also still change the version, but enable back some things that are deprecated. Maybe you've been working on, on some features that are deprecated. You have fixed them all. You are ready to go to the Vue.js 3 version, but you need to, uh, let's say, leave some feature enabled for a short time so that you can go on with your work uh, in a different way. This is the configuration that you've been using. You will be using globally on your app, but you are able also to do that on per component basis. So on each component, you can also do this kind of configuration in that way. You just export some property, the compat config, and choose the features that you want to disable or enable. And finally, uh, you can also do some kind of configuration in your compile in your uh, build configuration and have some uh, compile warnings being, uh, let's say, produced um, during uh, the compilation so that you can know which features are being enabled or disabled. And there are fewer, um, op fewer options on that uh, configuration. If you go and have a look on the documentation, you will see that there are fewer uh, compiler options. All the compiler options start with the prefix of the compiler. And this is something that will look like this um, in your configuration at the end. So in case you've been using Vue CLI, you will have the alias and then all the compiler options. In case you have been using Vit, uh, the newer uh, build tool, you will see a configuration like this. And finally, um, you can also uh, tackle first the, the warnings that you've been receiving that are associated with your own source code. At first, um, I mentioned that it's a good idea or pattern to uninstall all the packages that will be breaking. Uh, go resolve all the issues that you need. Uh, in your own code, the ones that come from your implementation, the features that you have been using that are deprecated, and then go back maybe and fix the issues that are associated with the packages. So fixing your own code first, the ones that will emit the warnings, the ones that are associated with the flags that we've seen earlier on the global configuration or on the per component configuration would be a good step. 
And one thing that is not going to, it's deprecated, but it's not going to provide a warning, it's the only thing actually that it's not going to provide a warning, uh, is the change of the class names for the transitions. So we used to have um, transitions that end with the suffix does enter, and now it's changed and you need to add the suffix uh, does from. So this is just the only runtime warning that it's not uh, produced. Uh, we will not see it in your console log. You can find it uh, by searching your app and making the appropriate changes. Finally, um, after the global configuration uh, that we've seen earlier, you will need to upgrade the app entry. We used to instantiate an instance with a new view, but then but now you will need to call the create app method where you can mount the component in the respective target uh, element. And of course, of course, finally, you will have to migrate all the components that we said earlier that maybe you removed or you need to move them into their latest version. For example, you might have a Vuex that needs to go, needs to be changed to Pinia. You should migrate that to, me, to Pinia or view router to the latest version. And uh, apart from the steps, I would like to make a small note here on how you can read the documentation. Uh, it is very important. What I found use, find useful is that I have some kind of uh, guide when I read the documentation so that I can know where I should look for. So what you can expect from the documentation on the breaking changes, for example, you might be using two features of you and you want to address them. You will find on, its, on the breaking changes section uh, the feature name, you will have an overview describing you what it's about. You will have some kind of example describing even more how it's go it was used uh, in the past on Vue.js 2, the syntax on the newer version, and also the, all the nuances between those two versions. And also you will have an important section which is about the build flags. It's called migration build, I guess. And there you will see all the listed flags that you can use inside that object that we've seen earlier. So once you finish resolving the issues as documented, for example, for unscoped uh, slots, then you can find the build, that, build uh, flags on that page and go to your configuration file and disable them. For example, Let's say that we have been using filters. This is a, um, a common feature that was used a lot in the past by the pipe. So you have a variable which has, let's say, some number, and it's um, the output actually of that would be the number along with the currency. So in that case, in Vue.js2, you would have this uh, filter, which is actually a method that returns the, um, the change value. But on Vue.js3, uh, this is deprecated. You will need to remove all those filters in your object and just create a computed property or create a util, a util method that returns the value that you need. So, for example, if you use the computed approach, it would be something like that. This would be the step for deprecating, for removing all the deprecations, let's say, for the filters that you have on the, your application. And finally, when all those warnings uh, are fixed, you are able to uninstall view compat, remove the global configuration that you might have applied, and probably you have finished all the work and you can go home <laughs> and live your life. <laughs> so that is all. Thank you all. I hope you found this interesting. I'm interested, I know it's a bit technical about the Vue.js framework, but I hope that you might uh, found something out of it. Thank you.